Hey everyone, Shebim here and welcome back to our third and final part of NXT UK's TakeOver Frankfurt pay-per-view. We have got three more big matches for you this evening, including a huge Fatal 4-Way, the, uh, the, 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 the first ever pure championship match on the NXT UK championship being defended. Wow, that was terrible. And here is our first match of the evening. It is going to be a fatal four match with Rezar, Walter, Dave Mastiff, and Cassius Ono making his debut here in NXT UK. And here we go then. First of all, in this match, we have got Walter. Second, then, we have got Big Dave Mastiff. He's done okay so far. Uh, he did get a big victory over Killian Dane, but also lost to Rezar. It's a bit up and down so far for Mastiff, but great chance him tonight to get some retribution. Next up then, we have got Rezar. One match, one victory so far. Of course, like I just said, against Dave Mastiff. So this could be a great chance for Rezar to have a bit of a singles run. And finally, making his debut here in NXT UK, it is Cassius Ono. Of course, not from Europe, which is what this uh, brand is based around, but I feel his style will definitely fit very, very well in this roster. So yes, Crassius Ono's here. Right then, the bell goes and we are underway. Fatal 4-Way Elimination Match. Now, what we said in the previous, not the previous, the one before this video. No, that is the previous. The previous before the previous. What we said in part one of the TakeOver Frankfurt event was that the triple threat match, uh, of course, between McIntyre, Balor, and Dunn, um, which, of course, was won by Drew McIntyre, the winner of that match will take on the winner of this match in a number one contendership match at some point in the next month. So that is what we will be doing, uh, which I think will uh, bring us some very interesting results. I think no matter what happens, whether it's even McIntyre or any of these four guys, we're going to have a very interesting challenge for our NXT UK champion. Which, of course, will be in this video as well as Travis Banks will defend against Alistair Black, who, of course, won the Rumble in episode number one. And also then we will see uh, the crowning of the first UK Pure Champion, of course, the submission-only championship belt we've been sort of teasing for quite some time. We'll finally get a chance to use it. As Rezar now a Mastiff in the ring, in comes Cassius Ono. Big close down to the back of Walter. But Walter comes straight through with that palm strike to the chest. We know that Walter's strikes are incredible. They always have been. He's an absolute brute of a man, is Walter. But Cassius Ono giving him a run for his money at this point in time. Cassius taking Walter down. The referee's been flattened as well. Cassius is dropping a boot right into the arm of Walter. Some clubbing elbows. Up on his shoulders. Dropping neck first across that top. I I would like to see Walter. I really would in the top end of this. Thing is though, if... Um, I'm a little bit disappointed, right? If Walter was to win this match. And obviously beat McIntyre. And then Black was to win the NXT UK Championship. Then take over Frankfurt would have been perfect. For Walter versus Alistair Black, of course, both worked a lot in WXW. I'm sure there's more German takeovers as well, though, I think. I'll have to have a look. There's a real, real fantastic... I'm still amazed by how good this arena is, to be honest with you. It's a really, really good arena. 
I really do appreciate this arena a lot. Whoever made it is absolutely uh, fantastic at doing this sort of stuff. Rezar still fighting Mastiff, middle of the ring, but Mastiff is back up and takes him out. Of course, Rezar is aligned loosely with Rockstar Spud, but Rockstar Spud, of course, was involved in that ladder match in the previous episode. So not able to be out here for this match. Mastiff looking for some retribution. Like I said, he had a one match against Rezar, which was actually scheduled to be against Spud. It's supposed to be Rockstar Spud versus Dave Mastiff, and Spud replaced himself with Rezar. Which really didn't give Mastiff much chance to really prepare for his opponent, which might be one of the reasons why Rezar was able to defeat him. You never know. Walt on the outside, launching German suplex, just firing Cassius Ono quite some distance on the outside. Rezar sending Mastiff off the ropes, and both guys go chest to chest. Strong strikes by Rezar, and then just flattens straight through Mastiff as Ono just dumps Walter on the edge of the apron. Ono sending Walter back into the ring. Clubbing blow as Rezar taking down Mastiff. And now Cassius Ono fighting off against Rezar. Spiked pile drive by Cassius Ono. Really showcasing some great ability here on his debut. Now stalking Walter. Oh no, into that neck breaker position. Releases in the forearm to the back of the head. That could be the elimination here of Walter. There's the pin by Cassius Ono. One, two, and three. And there we go. Walter has been eliminated. We are down to our final three. On oh, a big bicycle kick there by Cassius Ono. Went for another one there on... Rezar, who avoided it and then but gets caught with Cassius Ono with the big boot. Cassius Ono looking fantastic here on his debut in NXT UK. We've added a lot of people to the roster in this uh, free part paper, haven't we? Uh, Eric Young joining Sanity. Uh, previous episode, we saw Will Ospreay and Pac. We also saw Nick Aldis make his debut in the previous episode as well. Will there be more? In this? Well, we've got Cassius Ono in this video. Will there be any more joining the roster? Discus Lariat there by Dave Mastiff. Mastiff's stiff right hand. Rezar taking him down. Rezar now taking Mastiff and launching him across the ring by his neck. Cassius Ono's back up on his feet though. Takes Rezar up into a power bomb. Wow, jackknife power bomb by Cassis Ono and Rezar. Wrenching back at the arm of Dave Mastiff, and Ono really has looked dominant in this match so far. But of course, you don't have to look dominant. It's just about getting that last pinfall. That wasn't even a proper sentence, wasn't it? It's all just about who gets that last pinfall, isn't it, really? Mastiff dropping his body weight across the chest of Cassius Ono. Back up to his feet. Into a German suplex, launching Ono into the ropes. Mastiff now dropping Rezar with a backdrop. And all of a sudden, Mastiff's in firm control until Rezar rolls him through with the arm drag. Ono catches... Rezar, though, into a running sit-out powerbomb. Wow, Ono has really shown some dominance in this video, isn't he? I think he's going to be a really good addition to this roster. Nice clothesline. A second clothesline by Ono. Rezar gets back up again. And Ono with another clothesline. Backs away into the corner. Discus big boot avoided by Rezar. Who now drops Ono in a well, a backbreaker. Reverse DDT backbreaker. Mastiff's back in the ring now. Flattens Rezar and went for a bicycle kick on Mastiff. But Mastiff just avoided it. Mastiff has Ono. Went for the choke slam. But Ono reversed it into a DDT. Then just clotheslines Rezar. 
Ono dropping the elbow right across the chest of Master. I'll tell you what, Ono versus Ma uh, McIntyre would not be a bad match, would it? There's a reverse dragon sleeper hold by Ono on Mastiff. Will it cause a tap out? No, it doesn't. Mastiff rolling Ono through. And, oh, what a forearm. What a forearm. And a big uppercut to the back of the head of Rezar as well. Rezar fighting. Ono away. Ono rolls to the outside. Probably a bit wise. Just give him a breather. Allow Rezar to go after Mastiff instead. Mastiff went for the running crossbody, sold himself short, and then got a boot in the gut by Rezar, who's now stalking Mastiff. Rezar taking Mastiff up into the shoulders, into that powerbomb. Rezar has already defeated Dave Mastiff once in this universe mode. Is he going to get a second victory? There's the pin. One, two, and three. Has Rezar for the second time in a row in this universe mode. Has got a clean... Pinfall over Dave Mastiff. Ono taking him up into another powerbomb. Ono backs away into the corner. I think he might have been trying to line up for that discus big boot for some reason. Just couldn't quite do it. DDT. There's the pin. Referee slow to get down, but there's the one, two. And oh, it's a kick out on the brink of three. Ono now in the corner, stalking Reza. There's the discus big boot right to the face by Cassius Ono. Surely he's just got to go for the pin here. He doesn't go for the pin. Why? Why wouldn't you go for the pin from that? You're going to live to regret that now, Cassius. He gets flattened by Reza, who seems to be built up by that now. Both guys wearing a crimson mask now as well. Cassius slowly getting up to his feet. Stiff right hand in the gut of Reza. You saw that hurt, didn't it? Cassius now rolling Reza through. Brings him back up to a standing base. Draped across that top rope. Dropping him neck first across that top. And now... Ono stalking into the neck breaker position. Releases to the forearm to the back of the head. There's the pin. One, two, and three. And Cassius Ono is victorious here on his debut. And he has got a chance to go on to face off against Drew McIntyre. As my phone in the other side of the room goes off. I can't, I can't hear that too loud. He goes off to face Drew McIntyre in the next couple of weeks for an opportunity at the number one contendership for the NXT UK Championship. It's going to be an interesting match, that one. Looking forward to that. This was a pretty good match as well. A lot of action. Um, Cassius Ono really showed his ability. And for the second time in this universe mode, we saw Rezar get a clean pinfall victory over Dave Mastiff. It was very impressive. And Mastiff can't be happy with that. That's two losses in a row for him now. Of course, he defeated Killian Dane. But now two losses in a row. Um, both pinned by Rezar, who's a relatively newcomer, I suppose. If you look at that, especially in the singles division. But definitely trying to build himself up to show what he can do. Well done, Cassius Ono. We'll see that match against Drew McIntyre very, very soon. Right, next match. And here is our second match of the evening. In this one, we're going to be crowning our first British Pure Champion. Now, this man right here defeated Jack Gallagher a couple of episodes ago. And since then, he has been absolutely hounding me, telling me there's nobody on this roster more deserving of this championship than he is. And to be honest, the two people I first put in mind for this championship were both Jack Gallagher and Noam Dar. There are other people as well that could really fight in the submission division. However, I have recently come across somebody brand new, somebody who I think is perfect for this, somebody who I think is really going to give Noam Dar a run for his money. And Noam wanted the championship just to be handed over to him, but he's going to have to fight for it, especially when he faces off against this man.
Yes, that's right, making his debut in NXT UK. We have got Zack Sabre Jr., the man this championship is designed for, really, isn't it? A submission specialist in a submission-only championship division. Zack Sabre Jr. is going to be absolutely lethal. And can he walk away with the championship here tonight in his debut? And that's what it's for then, the British Pure Championship. The referee holds it up high. Noam Dar faces off against Zack Sabre Jr. A repeat from the Cruiserweight Classic. A match, of course, Zack Sabre Jr. won in real life. Nice punch right to the gut by Zack. And a big clothesline taking Noam Dar down. Noam Dar with the jawbreaker on Zack. Went for the dropkick, but Zack avoided it. And nice Hurricanrana as well on Noam Dar. Zack now just stamping on the chest of now middle of the ring. Say so Zack is a world-renowned submission specialist. This championship is exactly what he is designed for, really. Again, another Hurricanrana by Zack. And I sort of, I'm sort of torn in my mind about the whole situation with um, Zack and Ibushi at the time. I think that if either of those two had signed, they would have won the championship. However, they both declined to do so, and I feel like it might have been the best thing for them. I mean, Zack now is fighting in the main event of New Japan. You've got Kota Ibushi also fighting that top end of New Japan as well. Whereas if they were in WWE, where would they be now? Lost on 205 Live? Released like Neville? Austin Aries? <coughs> Until they finally get the idea that having this Cruiserweight brand as something completely separate from the rest of the show... I, yeah, until they realise that's not a good thing, I think it's not going to work for the really bigger names. It works fine for people who are cruiserweights and happy just being cruiserweights, but for people like Ares and Neville at the time and would be with Zack Sabre Jr. and Kota Ibushi as well, they don't want to be solely stuck as a cruiserweight. They want to be able to show themselves up and down the card against lots of different types of opponents. And I think as much as I would love to have seen Zack Sabre Jr. sign for WWE and get to see him week in, week out... The fact that um, we didn't means it's better for Zack and we're getting better matches for Zack as well. As Noam Dar showcasing some great ability. There's the drop kick, but Zack just slapped him away and caught him with a single leg drop kick of his own. Brings Noam back up to his feet, but Noam fighting back with the jaw break that into a crucifix bomb. Zack trying to get himself back up to his feet, but Noam catches him. And now looking to lock in that, looking to lock in that submission. Early submission attempt here by Noam Dar. Of course, if he gets the tap out, he becomes the first ever British pure champion. Zack sends Noam to the outside. Big forearm. Takes him up and drops him with a backdrop right on the apron. Such a painful manoeuvre, that one. Of course, uh... The middle of the ring is sort of springy because it is wood. It does have a bit of a bounce to it naturally. But when you land somebody on the edge like that, that is where the steel framework of the ring is. It's absolute solid. There's no spring in that at all. This match clashes to the outside once again. Zach throwing Noam, uh, Zach throwing Noam back into the ring. Zach now heading up to the top. I think he changed his mind as Noam started to try and crawl away. And Zack with a boot right in the gut of Dar. And now wrenching back with the arm breaker on Noam Dar. Boot in the gut and now wrenching back on the neck of Dar. Da, 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 da. So people used to cheer for Noam Dar. I used to go watch him in the UK scene. 
the Star Wars theme tune, but it's da 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 da. Because I think he had a shirt at one point called Star Wars. There's the across armbar locked in by Zach on Noam Dar. Does Dar da tap or can Dar break free? Dar has managed to roll it through. Couple of stiff right hands. Dar sending Zach into the corner. Nice running drop kick. Taking Zach down. And Dar now just choking Zach with the, the choke grip. Referee forcing Dar to break it. Dabry and Zach back up to his feet and stiff right hand in the gut. Zach now looking for the dragon suplex, but Da fights away. Da with the Northern Light suplex now backs into the corner and taking the top turnbuckle. This is supposed to be the pure championship, and Noam Da's taking the top turnbuckle pad off. So it's all be about pure wrestling, chain wrestling ability, submission ability, technical ability. And instead, we said Dar's going to try and win by any means necessary. It is a championship, don't get me wrong. Referee is looking like he's actually going to replace that missing turnbuckle pad. What on earth? It was a low blow by Noam Dar. Zack Sabre Jr. wins the match, but how does this work? Noam must have thought that... Hmm. Noam Dar must have thought that the referee wasn't going to see that. Referee did spot the low blow, and that throws controversy on this now. I mean, normally, you can't win the championship via disqualification. However, in this scenario, Noam Dar, what are you doing? What are you doing? A championship match, one of the biggest matches of your career, and you've absolutely lost it. Hmm, we're going to have to cross this bridge, aren't we? A tricky situation. Noam Dar gets himself disqualified in a championship match. Does that mean Zach is the champion? Or... Are we going to have to see another match here? I don't quite know. I'm going to leave this in your hands, I think. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And here is our main event of the evening. Alistair Black takes on Travis Banks for the NXT UK Championship. The following match is scheduled for one fall. One fall. And it is for the NXT UK Championship. Introducing first, the challenger. Slowly erecting from the ground. I don't forget where he's from. He's from Amsterdam, isn't he? From Amsterdam, Holland. Is it Amsterdam, Holland or Amsterdam, Netherlands? This always confuses me. I've always known him as Holland, but then they've been known more as the Netherlands. It's, it, I don't know what the difference is, to be honest with you. I, really, I think the Netherlands just sort of covers a few islands as well, I think. I'm not sure. Who knows? There is then your challenger. Won the opportunity to fight for this match when we had our 30-man roster reveal at the very beginning of this series. Uh, he entered, I think, at like number 26 and won the Rumble. So Alistair Black gets his opportunity here to fight against the champion, Travis Banks. And here is Travis Banks. His first time being seen in this year. Oh, that's terrible how much his uh, cape's glitching through the belt, isn't it? First time we've seen him so far in this universe mode. Of course, he was prevalent in our original NXT universe mode. Which is when he won this belt on the final episode, defeating Oni Lorcan to take it. He's held it all the time so far in this universe. Well, he's not wrestled so far in this universe mode, has he? This is his first real attempt to show what he can do. And can he retain the championship? And that's what it's for than the NXT United Kingdom Championship. 
We have got Alistair Black, who made his debut in WWE, I believe, in the original United Kingdom Championship Tournament, I believe, wasn't it? Is that correct? Uh, he Did he um, accept an open challenge from somebody? I can't remember that, to be honest with you. And Travis Banks as well, who I feel like is a, is a future WWE United Kingdom Champion. Be interesting to see who the first person is to get a feud against Walter, wouldn't it really? But I definitely think Banks could be an option for that. Banks is signed, isn't he? I'm sure he is. He was part of the tournament, so I'm pretty sure he must be signed. Travis Banks holds Hans, hands over the championship to our referee here for our main event of NXT TakeOver Frankfurt. The referee holds that championship up high. As we get Alex the Black. Alistair Black versus Travis Banks. I'm, I can't talk at all today, I'll tell you. So this is Banks' first proper championship defense for this championship. And it's not exactly giving easy, was it? Alistair Black, absolute stunning. One of my favorite wrestlers in the entire world. It's just so cool. He's just so cool, it's unbelievable. And he has a chance to walk away here as the main event champion. The champion of the entire brand. Which is exactly where I want to see him. Nice DDT there by Alistair Black. Who has dominated the uh, majority of the match so far. He backed away to the corner. He's not He's not going to squash him here, is he, surely? The way he backed into the corner made me feel like he was going to look for one of his special manoeuvres. Again, Black backed into the corner there for a split second before changing his mind. Banks are finally looking to try and get some offence in this match, but it's not really worked out to him too well, has it? As Alistair Black once again, Saito suplex. It's like Black is taking Travis Banks to suplex city here, isn't he, really? Big boot against the head and Bank with a few strikes. Sending Black off the ropes. Black jumps over the top. Ducks underneath. Then ducks underneath again and then a big boot right across the chest. And a lion salt by Alistair Black as well. Who is really dominating this match at this point in time. There's a one count. Misses the kick to the back. And Travis Banks with a reverse. Rana. Finally getting some offense. Didn't last very long, did it? Spinning kick by Alistair Black. Just twisting the neck now. Oh. Really wrenching the neck of Travis Banks before stalking. Really? Black Mass already. Black Mass hit by Alistair Black. One. Two. Wow. That would have been dominant. That would have been. But Alistair Black looking so strong here tonight. Black another Saito suplex. Just drags Travis Banks middle of the ring drops double butts in double butts double boots into the gut. Banks now bringing Black back up to his feet, looking for the Nova Light suplex. How is Banks even moving at this point in time? I mean, I know if I'd taken a Black Mass, I wouldn't be moving for about a week. Dragon suplex there by Travis Banks as well, a boot right in the gut of Alistair Black, and finally. Banks getting some offense. Sustained offense as well. Travis Banks, nice scoop slam on Tommy End. Good old Tommy End. Oh, look at those boots in the face by Travis Banks on Alistair Black. Travis now wrenching back at the leg. Stomping on the arm. 
Brings Black back up to a all fours before dropping an axe handle right in the spine. Banks sending Black into the corner. Oh, nice. Spun him round and dropped to that combination backbreaker cutter. Banks throwing Black straight into the corner, but Black is fighting back now. Went for an ace crusher, but Banks threw him away and then hit them with the Hurricanrana. And I tell you what, just as much as Alistair Black dominated early on, Travis Banks is dominating towards the end of this match. DDT, though, by Alistair Black straight into the pin. One, two, only a two count. Banks is busted open. Alistair Black now bringing Banks back up to his feet. Black Mass for the second time in the match. And surely one, two, and we have a brand new NXT UK champion in Alistair Black. What a match. And it was an interesting one, really, because that victory sort of came from nowhere. I mean, Black hit the... He hit the fade to Black very early in the match. Then Travis Banks dominated for quite a prolonged period of time. Then just out of nowhere, two or three moves, culminating in a Black Mass, wins Alistair Black, the NXT UK Championship. There we go, brand new champion. We've got a lot of brand new. We've got brand new champions everywhere, haven't we? So we've got Tegan Knox as the NXT UK Women's Champion. Jordan Devlin is the British Lightweight Champion. Uh, the Grizzled Young Vets are the NXT UK Tag Team Champions. Alistair Black is the NXT UK Champion. And I feel like we're going to have to give Zack another opponent because I feel like when the championship is called the Pure Championship, giving it to someone based on a disqualification just sort of cheapens the belt. So I believe maybe Zack will face off against somebody maybe in our next video to uh, reinforce his position as the champion, but who knows. Anyway, of course, if you've enjoyed this video, please do hit a like and, of course, subscribe if you want to see some more. I've been Shepard Gamer. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.